Exploration Films. Check us out on the web at explorationfilms.com. So in the fall of 1971, I went to Baylor in Dallas and gave my first lecture. It was on the evolution of the tooth. And I talked about how these fish scales gradually migrated into the mouth and became teeth. And a couple of my students came to me after class that day and said, Dr. Martin, have you ever investigated the claims of creation science? Well, that was 1971. I'd never even heard of it. And uh, so I'm thinking to myself, where are these guys coming from? Uh, I've never heard of this. And uh, so I said, sure, I'll look into this with you. And I'm thinking, kind of as a cocky young professor, I'll blow these guys away. Well, they asked me to start studying the assumptions that the evolutionists make. And in all my years, eight years of scientific education, I had never had a single professor tell me about an assumption. And uh, so we started looking at the assumptions. And I began to realize, they're making some claims here that really the assumptions aren't valid. And, uh, and then they asked me to start studying some animals and see if I thought that animal could evolve. Well, the first thing that we really studied together was this little bug called a bombardier beetle. And this little insect, it's about a half inch long, and it mixes chemicals that explode. So I began to think, okay, now how would that evolve? Let's say if evolution is true, and you're evolving along here, and you don't have a defense mechanism, because that is the defense mechanism of the bug. So if evolution is true, it had to somehow evolve that. So let's say it's coming along here. Well, the first time it evolves the, the explosion, what does it do to the bug? Boom, you just splattered your bug, okay? So splattered bug pieces don't evolve. So I thought, well, how, how, how could this have happened? Well, it doesn't blow itself up. It has another little factory inside itself that manufactures chemicals, a chemical, acts as a catalyst, so that when you squirt that chemical in with these other chemicals that are like in neutral, you get your explosion. Well, the first time it manufactured that little chemical, it, it, here it goes again, blew itself up again. But it doesn't, why? Well, because it has like an asbestos-lined firing chamber. And even then it would blow itself up if it didn't have somewhere for the explosion to go. So it has uh, like twin tail tubes. And it can aim these tail tubes all the way up, out the side, out the front. Let's say a spider is coming up toward its side and it doesn't have time to turn around and shoot. Uh, it can just take its little gun turret, and aim it out there and shoot. The, the explosion on this little bug, all you hear, if, if you're listening as a human, you hear this pop. But scientists have now put that explosion in slow motion. And it's like, it's like about a thousand sequential little explosions, but they're so fast, all we hear is one pop. And so you think, well, now, why would that be? Well, that was a curious thing for the scientists that study this little bug. A lot of them at Cornell University, some other places. And what they discovered was that if it was just one big pop, the, the little bug, if he's shooting like a spider, let's say over here, uh, and he goes room bang and shoots it he's gonna pop himself right out of there it's like lighting a burner on a jet engine so he's out of there but as long as it is a sequential explosion with his little legs he can hang on how would evolution explain a sequential explosion this little bug messes with all the theories of evolution there is no way a slow gradual process is going to produce this bug there's no way uh, even the newest theories of evolution, like punctuated equilibria, which means evolution happens very fast. Well, there's no way that will explain this little bug. I began to realize, how could this particular little animal, for instance, evolve? Uh, it needed all of its parts. It needed everything there all at once, or you just don't have the animal. And my stomach started to churn, if, if I really want to be honest. And my wife would tell you, my stomach churned for five years. It took a five-year struggle for me to begin to flip the way I think from thinking in an evolutionary way to thinking in more this animal or little creature, little bug, whatever, was created uh, fully formed, just like it is, because that went against everything I'd ever learned. Exploration Films, where curious truths and uncommon minds meet.